very good morning to all of you. Namaste. This is a Sunday morning. And I think Sundays have to be celebrated differently in order to make it feel like a Sunday during this lockdown period. So we thought, let's take you across to New Zealand. We have two brilliant speakers from New Zealand coming to you live from there. We have with us Mr. Warren Fernandez. He is a consultant director of the Education Advisors Limited from New Zealand. We also have with us Ms. Linda Miller, who is the principal of the Otago Girls High School at, in New Zealand. She's been uh, also the principal of the uh, Ford College, of uh, Fordland College at, uh, in New Zealand. Currently, she is the chairperson of the Otago Secondary School Principals Association and also the chair of uh, the study at Dundin, an uh, organization that supports providers of international education in the city and co-chair of the quality education group of the University of the United Nations Otago Regional Center of Expertise. Both of them are going to be talking to us about opportunities and avenues of studying in New Zealand. We will also know about the education pattern there, the kind of skills that are required uh, and what do they train their children on. So it gives us a very broad spectrum of idea of what kind of skills uh, across the world children need today. It will also give us an opportunity to know what are the opportunities that lie ahead of us for study in New Zealand. So it is my pleasure to invite both Mr. Fernandez, Warren Fernandez, and Ms. Linda Miller to Srimati Sulochna Devi Singhania School this Sunday morning. I'm sure all of you had a lovely breakfast and we look forward more food for thought from both of them. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation and thank you for being here today. Thank you. On to you, Mr. Fernandez. Good morning, everyone. Namaste and Kiora. Thank you, Mrs. Repti, for that introduction. And thank you for giving us this opportunity to uh, speak to your students. Uh, so today we'll be talking about the, what are the opportunities of studying in New Zealand. So I am going to share my screen. Uh, As you know, we are from NZEA, which is New Zealand Education Advisors Limited. Uh, I will not go into this detail at the, at the moment, but um, you all know that knowledge is required and the compulsion obtains no hold in the mind. What it means basically that you, if you're forced to study, you will not retain that knowledge. So we, I'm sure at your age that you are wanting to do and whatever you want to do, and that's what you do, you're able to retain and use that as knowledge. So I would like to share with you a small concept which will help you in life, which is called imagineering. Now I will not take too much time on this. If you all can make a note of this, take a screenshot of this, and I will come back to this later. It means in short, that whatever you want to do five years from now, think that, okay, fine, now we are in 2020, in 2025, what you want to be and work backwards every year to see that you are accomplishing that goal. So if you are, for example, on, at the age of, say you're in uh, 11 standard at the age of 15, in 2025, you'll be 20 years old. At 20 years old, then will, will you be completing your bachelor's degree and in what stream? So from the education point of view, if you have chosen to do, for example, engineering, then you have to work backwards and see that, have you taken steps to see that you get into engineering? So these are the various topics that we'll be talking about today. We'll be talking about what are the options of study after the 10th standard, what are the options of study after the 12th standard? We'll also talk about an experience program 
So just a small quick brief about New Zealand and our culture a bit. It was in between 12, 1280 and 1350 that the Polynesians, which in this triangle that you can see here, from the various islands around here in New Zealand, that they came to New Zealand first. They developed this Maori culture. And today it is what we have New Zealand as a foundation of theirs being, them being Maori. After that, you can see in my slide itself that it was Abel Tasman who came in and then people from United Kingdom. Now, what is the reasons that you would like and why you should come to New Zealand? New Zealand has a world-class education. We say that we have got eight universities in New Zealand and all of them are top 3% in the world. The education system also in New Zealand is that it's the first out of the 35 economies, it's a research that was carried out, which instills future skills. What does it mean? It means that it makes students work ready. It makes you all ready to go and get jobs once you get educated into our New Zealand education system. Now, uh, New Zealand is also the most safest country in the world. In fact, it, we are the second most peace as per the Global Peace Index 2017. Studying is in this environment, as you can see over here on my slide, it's a politically stable country and with the least amount of corruption. Different countries have different corruption level. We are the least. Now, again, another point, why do you need to come and study in New Zealand? Because we are a hands-on learning system. There's a saying, tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember. Involve me and I learn. So it's an involving system. It's a hands-on training system in New Zealand. And New Zealand, when you come over here, see, wherever you want to go as a <coughs> country or wherever you go from one place to the other, even when you leave your home and you go for a picnic and if you don't know people over there and people are not welcoming, you feel out of place. But New Zealand is the country where New Zealanders are very friendly. That means when you walk on the road, even on the beach or anywhere, People will greet you, people will hello you. And that's where you feel very welcome in a country like this. We were the first to have the code of practice. What does it mean? It means that for, for international students, when you come here, we call you all international students because you all are coming internationally from India to New Zealand. We were first to form an act and the code of practice that means forming a system, how do we take care of international students? And I'm sure you know this, that learning in New Zealand is in English. It is similar to what India is. There are a lot of similarities between India and New Zealand. And one is that our education is in English. Second, we are both have the British influence. So that means that make, makes things a little easier in terms of um, uh, spelling and everything. Third is that both our countries have our independence connected to uh, 1947. And we, we drive on the same side of the road. So that means that you as students tomorrow when you become a little bigger and you want to drive on the road, so you'll be the same way how today I'm sure you're riding on cycles in the school or some way of uh, mode of transport, you can, it is the same side of the road. So these things make it very easy for you to adapt to New Zealand way of li life. 
Now, New Zealand is one of the first countries, I would say, or one of the best countries to offer these type of uh, facilities when, where you can work while you study. So to support your studies, there are opportunities where you can get a job. It allows you to work for 20 hours a week during your semester, during your, say, your, your studying, and there is a time where you get some time to put in to, uh, to get a job and to maybe work for a few hours in a week. So up to 20 hours a week, you can get paid for your work, which is the minimum wage rate that we have in New Zealand, which is $18.90, which in INR in rupees comes to 919 rupees. So this is per hour. So per hour and you work for 20 hours a week on during uh, your semester, during your study time, and you're allowed 40 hours during holidays. Now, besides that, all these, if you all want further information, look at the left screen down. There is a immigration website. All this information is given on the immigration website. That besides that, that when you think of coming to study New Zealand mainly, if you do a level seven course, which is your bachelor's program, or you come after the 10th standard and you do your maybe do your 12th, 11th, and 12th and 13th over year, and do a bachelor's program, you will be allowed to work for three work for three years no questions asked another reason for you to come to new zealand is studying in new zealand is an opportunity for personal growth and development by studying in new zealand and gaining this whatever degree you do, whether you do a diploma or a degree, this thing on your CV is going to carry a lot of weight. It will open doors to different parts of the world. This will make you a global citizen. You all all know that New Zealand, we have beautiful landscapes. Now it's unbeatable uh, beatable lifestyle that we stay over here in New Zealand, where you can improve your work life balance and it's not always all about work and all, always about study. So basically it will allow you to um, do some sporting events. There are lots of clubs around over here. There are lots of um, uh, ways to balance your life in such a way that you will enjoy living in a country in New Zealand. Now the visa, what, are the, what is the process of uh, uh, getting a visa to coming when you want to come to New Zealand and study here in New Zealand. All this information is very easily given on our website, which is called immigration.govt.nz. This is the Immigration uh, New Zealand website. We are one of the few providers where we bring students from India to New Zealand, where we've got a 100% visa approval rate. So this means that none of our students that we have got who have come to study either after the 10th standard from India or after the 12th or to do the bachelor's program or to do the postgraduate, none of our students visa application has been rejected. So this is something which I shared with you all earlier too, for a level seven bachelor's degree qualification. That means when you do your bachelor's program, you get three years open post-study work visa. What does this mean? That means after you have done your bachelor's pro program, which is generally three years, if you do an engineering, which could be four years, you will get another three years to be in the country where you can work, you can probably start a business or do anything. But three years, no questions asked, after you finished your program, what you come for. What is our education system in New Zealand? We start off with, say when we are below five years, we go, we, we have an early childhood system where you could go to a daycare, you could go to a kindergarten, 
or after that, where do you where do you go? From age five onwards, we start school, which is year one. What we call in India standard first standard is where we start primary school over here. Then we go into intermediate, we go into secondary, and then we go into higher education. Uh, so for you, after the 10th standard, you fall into the category that yes, you will you are eligible to go to year 11. Standard 11 and year 11 mean the same thing in New Zealand. You can do 11, 12, 13, and then do bachelor's program in New Zealand. So this is what I was talking about. The early childhood education from here, you go to primary school, you go to high school, and then you have a choice. You may go to, there are different education providers in New Zealand, you may go to a university or you may go to an institute. Institute and Polytech is similar or the same. We've got eight universities and we've got 16 ITPs or Polytechs in New Zealand. Or you may go to a private provider to do a specialized course. Now applied courses, you may choose to probably go to a private provider Every university, every institute, every PT, which is private training establishment, has different advantages or disadvantages. It depends on case-to-case -case basis that you may choose. That's where we will help you to do that. So when you finish your high school or your, sorry, your schooling after the 10th standard in India, and in case you want to come to New Zealand at that point of time, there's no requirement for IELTS test or English, any English test. It is based on what subjects you are good in and what you want to achieve in life. And the advantages when you come to a high school in New Zealand, after your 10th standard, to do maybe, if there is a possibility that instead of going to year 11, because of the type of marks that you've scored in, depending on what you want to do, you may go directly to year 12, do year 12, 13, and then a bachelor's program. Now, when you do year 12 and 13, um, there is no requirement of English test. The only requirement is that you should achieve university entrance. What does it mean? It means getting certain credits in the subjects that you take. Now I will uh, hand over the presentation to Linda, who's the principal of Otago Girls. She will explain the different subjects and the opportunities that are there connected to high school. Thank you very much. And I'll see you a little later. Thank you very much, Warren. Namaste. Kia ora koutou. Kia ora koutou is Māori, which, um, who are Indigenous people in New Zealand. Um, for welcome and hello. So it's lovely to, to meet you all here today. I know it's your Sunday morning, it's actually our Sunday evening. So it's wonderful to be talking to you. As Warren said, I'm the principal of a secondary school in New Zealand, and I was just going to share some information with you about secondary schooling. Um, we, I do have a PowerPoint, which I think is going to get put up. Um, Thank you. So I'll talk a little bit about secondary schooling and the transition to tertiary education. So if we go to the next slide, please. Then, thank you. Uh, so New Zealand has a number of major cities. It's a very small country compared to India. We have only 5 million people. And there are many advantages of having such a small population. One of which is that we have managed to almost eliminate COVID from our shores. So at the moment, we only have a very small number of cases which have come in from overseas, and we're very proud of that fact. Despite the fact that we're very small, we actually punch above our weight. We do very well when it comes to education. And the centres that you can see on the map here are some of our main towns and cities, um, with the major cities in New Zealand being Wellington, Auckland, Christchurch and Dunedin. So we have schools throughout the entire country who take international students such as yourselves through their secondary education system 
and we prepare students to be successful at tertiary institutions. We could go to the next slide, please. So there are two qualifications that students are able to study for in New Zealand. The vast majority do NCEA, which stands for the National Certificate of Educational Achievement. Now, NCEA is um, a standards-based system of assessment, which means that you're not competing against everybody. You're aiming to get the highest uh, qualification that you can, the highest grades that you can. And you build up your qualification by getting credits across a range of subjects which you put together to create the qualification that you're after. Um, in terms of international baccalaureate, there are only a small number of schools who offer that in New Zealand, most of them being private schools. Um, so only 13 schools offer that program. However, NCEA is our national qualification and is available um, to, uh, sorry, does make it possible for you to enter university, university, not just in New Zealand, but internationally as well. We could go to the next slide, please. So NCEA at schools has three levels. Level one is our year 11, which is the equivalent of your 10th standard. So at level one, you do NCEA level one, level two is done generally in year 12, and level three and university entrance is achieved in year 13 for the vast majority of students. To, uh, NCEA is a mixture of both internally assessed standards, so things and assessments that you do at school and externally assessed standards, which are assessed generally by a national examination at the end of the year. And the flexibility this gives us is enormous. So if you're doing a practical subject, such as uh, practical art, for example, you are assessed on the pieces of artwork that you do and get assessed throughout the year. If you're doing a subject like food technology, you would be assessed on the, on the cooking or the preparation of food that you do throughout the year. And so the style of assessment fits what it is that we're actually assessing rather than all being packaged into an end of year examination. Many of our students really flourish under this system um, because it's, it's testing a range of skills and gives that flexibility. At, at level three, um, you can either get level three and or university entrance. And university entrance does require a certain level of numeracy and literacy, as well as level three in a number of university approved subjects. Could we go to the next slide, please? So if one of the key things about the New Zealand system of education is that it's very flexible. So those students who achieve level two NCEA are able to go on to trades academies, polytechnics, foundation studies at university, and at the level two can be either academic or vocational in focus. Level three, similarly. And then university entrance allows students to gain access to universities in New Zealand and across the world. And it's mainly academic in focus. So if any student can be doing a mix of both vocational and academic subjects that allows them to get into the university system, but also enables them to follow their passions. And I think that's one of the beauties of the system also. Could we go to the next slide, please? The New Zealand education system uses the New Zealand curriculum. And this is a very groundbreaking curriculum. It's recognized internationally as a top quality document because it not only outlines the content that's to be covered, it also covers the values, the principles and the key competencies that we want our students to graduate with. Uh, and the next slide, please. So this shows um, the vision, which is that young people who will be confident, connected, actively involved, lifelong learners. And our values, our key competencies, and our learning areas, of which there are eight, sit under this with the principles. And this is where New Zealand is a, a system that is ready for the future. We teach the skills of communication of critical thinking, of creativity and collaboration. And our programs of learning allow students to develop these skills. Next slide, please. 
in terms of a program of learning, year 11, which as I mentioned is equivalent of your 10th standard, generally you would do three compulsory subjects and then you would do three optional subjects. And again, this allows you to follow your passions. Each school has a different mix of subjects and you can easily find out about individual schools and what they offer by looking at their websites. Next slide, please. At year 13, we usually study only five subjects and by year 13, students are specialising in the areas that they really want to pursue and that's determined by their interests and the qualifications that they want to go on and do. And every school has excellent programs of mentoring and support for that. Next slide, please. Uh, the other thing about New Zealand schools is it's not just about, about academic programs. We strongly believe in the importance of co-curricular activities to develop those skills that we want in our students. So all schools have great programs of sport, of cultural activities, of outdoor education and of clubs. And it's through those that you develop those, those um, skills of collaboration, creativity and so on. So that's a very quick rush through secondary education. I'm very happy to answer any questions later and um, look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. And once again to me and um, I would like to show you all a video of um, what is in when you study in the high school, uh, what is the type of homestay that you will live in? So there's an example of one person who's come from, who studied uh, in a school in Panjgini. He came to do after the 10th center to New Zealand. And there's a short video of his homestay uh, and how he lived in this homestay. Hello guys, my name is Meet Barot and uh, I'm from Kalyan, Mumbai, India. I completed my schooling in St. Peter's Boy, Boys High School, Panjgani. Um, I completed my 10th standard and then uh, my main motive was to become a vet uh, and work on my father's farm. So I decided to choose the best country to uh, study for vet, that is New Zealand. Uh, so now I'm here in Timuru Boys High in year 12. In year 12. This is my bedroom. Just everything you need, my study table. That's the wardrobe and the drawers, a mirror, and you can see that brightly lit sky with stars in the night. It's beautiful from out here, from this window. This is the bedroom of my host, my host parents. Uh, so this is the living room. This is where all the family all sit together after having the dinner and have a nice little chat about how the day was spent and as you can see from the window the best view you can you can get from the the best view you can get just so peaceful this here is the dining table um well most of the time the family is busy so we have a dinner at different times but on the weekends we all sit together and have a nice feast we can say it's, it is good when we all have the meal together. This is the kitchen. All the meals prepared here are just your yeah, stomach filling. Just, it's just good. And you can, you can come here anytime, help yourself with whatever you want. It's just like home. You don't have to feel stranded. Or this here is the second living room. This is used mostly in Um, winter, they lit up the fire, firewood. This here is the, this is actually uh, the children's block. The daughter of the host would 
she was staying here now she shifted with her boyfriend and the son still lives with them he's at work at the moment he he is in this room and this is the washroom and even i use this washroom it's always clean and nice and fresh um so this is the pantry where everything all the ingredients and the, all the foods is kept you can just barge into this any time you want and i have a special drawer here for myself where i keep all my stuff so this is where all my stuff is all my junk food you can say so i just come here any time i want help myself with chips cereals soups noodles pastas anything so you just you just don't stay hungry this is my homestay um this is where i live there are my host parents his uh he is human holova known as hori and she is lian holova hello they, <laughs> they just remind me of my home and they never let me uh feel lonely they always are there for me they help me with anything i want and they are just great guys uh thanks so you all saw at the moment that um uh what is uh, the homestay and where meet barrett has been staying this is the photographs of various whenever you when you choose to come to new zealand there's opportunities where you can gather with students these are all students from the high school where we meet once in a while uh and have a chat uh this is what this high school is like this is one of the students i'll just take you quickly through uh the slides because we have to wrap up fast in a couple of minutes so when you come to new zealand you wonder okay fine what's it like who will meet you at the airport we are here in new zealand to meet you at the airport we will make things we'll hold your hand and take you to the various procedures and systems that are there in new zealand that's the advantage of uh, coming through us we are here in based in new zealand so this is his om gupta who has come who came to do uh, after his 10th standard he was in um, uh, he studied in manichi cooper school in uh, juhu these are students who were um, trying to see if they could do a flying lesson you as a student will get to go for a lot of outings with friends this is how uh, when you're studying this is how in one of the schools the cooking and cookery courses and the facility that are available now uh, i was spoke about work that you can when you are studying you can work now meet barrett worked in this uh, also place uh, in this farmhouse where there were cows and he was learning to become a vet so he wanted to know how um, so he got an opportunity to work in a place where there were cows he was milking the cows and understanding uh, things connected to cows so he even was paid for his job <laughs> so what are the different universities in new zealand we spoke about eight universities the university of auckland university of otago victoria university university of canterbury university of waikato massey university lincoln university and aut now all these eight universities are very good in top 3% in the world but all of them have certain advantages and certain subjects that they would be much better than doing from the other university that's where we come in to give you advice on based on what you wanting to do in life so what are the fees like in when you do a program like for a bachelor's degree program or when for a high school high school program is around 14000 to 15000 new zealand dollars per year that is equivalent to 6 and a half to 7 lakhs rupees uh and then you need an another homestay cost so roughly around 13 lakhs to 14 lakhs is your total one year cost 
per year when you're doing high school. But if you choose to come after the 12th and to do a bachelor's degree, the course fees are either 22,000 if you're doing it at a polytech or, or around 30 to 35,000 even, not 32,000, but 35,000 even depending on what, what you plan to do. What is the cost of living? In New Zealand, uh, for immigration purpose, for the visa purpose, which is given on the immigration website, you will see that the cost you have to show and to prove evidence that you have 15,000 New Zealand dollars per year. But depending on your entertainment and whatever you do in life in New Zealand, it may range from 15,000 to 20,000, which, which includes your cost of accommodation, your cost of um, uh, food and everything. And this does not, 15,000 does not include the cost of tuition fees. For a high school, we have already covered what are the requirements. There is basically, uh, there is no real requirement for high school. All you have to do is to know what you want to achieve in life and then take up subjects based on what Linda was talking about, the various subjects. You've got choice of uh, up around 50 subjects to choose from, and you have to do only around five or six subjects based on which year you are. But when you go to do an undergraduate program, the requirements are different. So that means you need to do an English test or achieve certain minimum marks. Now, for you to get a feel of whether you want to really dive into uh, New Zealand, we have an experience program. It's a short stay program you, where you can come to New Zealand. We will put you either in a school for a few days or in a university where you sit in class and understand what the lecture is about. And that's an experience program, what we do for schools. We have done this for many schools, and I may show you a video, if time permits, of how GD Somani or St. Peter's uh, School have come to New Zealand and with 10 students, 20 students, and had an experience program. Now, what are the options after the 12th standard? These are various options in arts, science, commerce, and various other things that you have. So I'll go quickly on this, architecture and design, engineering, health, biomedical, humanities, business and law, and like I've mentioned uh, before, we are with you all the way, right from giving you advice, and we are a registered company in New Zealand. Now, this is some testimonial from one of the, of one of the students. Kay is doing her Bachelor's of Commerce with conjoined with uh, fashion design. She studied at Bombay Scottish, and she's at Victoria University at the moment. Muriel, which is the father, uh, her father's name is Frank. This is the message he's written, but his uh, daughter came to do music in high school over here in New Zealand. Pavitra is a is a student who came to do post-graduation in health science. So thank you for your time. And uh, we may show you some videos if time permits, uh, but over on to Vaijanti. So one of the questions is um, that has come here. Can you all hear me? <laughs> yeah. So uh, one of the questions that has come up over here is that do we need to take NCA exams to get to New Zealand after the 12th 
for bachelor's program. Uh, so to gain entry to university, you can either get into university through NCEA if you study in New Zealand, or you can get into university um, with the qualifications that Warren had on his slide. So if you come directly from India, there would be an English and IELTS requirement there, um, along with the, the um, grades that are outlined. If you come via New Zealand school, not only do you get a guaranteed place in a university of your of your choice, uh, you also um, don't have to have that IELTS result. Uh, so the question is, what was the scope after the third year of college? When you say third year of college, you're talking about bachelors after the, that means for a post-graduation program. Uh, it depends what you want to do, uh, Kevin. Uh, when you say, uh, what is the scope? Again, uh, it depends what you have achieved in your bachelor's degree in terms of your percentages and what you want to do and in terms of the postgraduate program. There has to be a link between what you have done and what you want to do. To get into year 11, it's really just a matter of applying to a school. Um, and in New Zealand, we have a range of different types of school. There are co-educational schools, there are single sex schools, and that's where Warren can really play a role in terms of helping you choose the school that's going to provide you with the opportunities that you want to follow your passions and interests. So each school has a slightly different flavor. Each school has particular things that um, they specialize in. And so that's where an agent such as Warren can really um, play a key role in helping you choose the school that's going to give you the best experience. And as he said also, there are no minimum requirements in terms of entry into a school. Um, so you basically come to the school. My experience with Indian students is that your English is extremely good because you've done all your learning in English and you slot into the education system in New Zealand very, very easily. Um, the style of teaching is slightly different. Um, there is, you're required to really think for yourself, to problem solve, to work collaboratively and so on. And I don't know you do that in, in many schools in India, um, but because of, it's kind of a different relationship with your teachers. Um, so that's, that's a bit different and something that you would experience if you came on one of the experience trips. Is a homestay very common? One question is, is homestay very common? What other options are available? So Linda, you um, want to take it? Yeah, sure. Uh, yes, homestay is very common in New Zealand. And as Warren mentioned earlier, we every school that has international students is required to be a signatory to the code of practice. That means there are very strict rules around ensuring the safety of students and ensuring that students in homestays are happy and healthy and well. For example, our international directors will do will meet with students at least once every term, do surveys and meet with the homestay parents. All homestays are inspected before we accept them as a homestay parent and all homestay parents are police vetted to ensure that there are no issues there. So it's a very safe and a very good way to really experience the true Kiwi culture. There are some schools who have hostels, not every school has a hostel, and there are sometimes places in school hostels, but it tends to be more common to have homestay than hostel accommodation. Both are very good. So the advantages of being in a homestay is that you get to understand the culture very fast. So it will be easier for you to adapt to the New Zealand way of life. Although it is not very difficult, it is for people in Thane, Mumbai, it's so easy. So I'm originally from Mumbai, from Bandra, so, uh, which I've explained. So when I came first with my children, it was very easy for them to adapt. So can students work while they're studying in New Zealand? Yes, I think that's one of the slides that we covered where we said you can work once you're in year 12 onwards you are allowed to work for 20 hours a week during your course days and 40 hours during holidays. But obviously when you first come into the country, we always suggest do not go for a job, 
understand uh, New Zealand culture, understand the different things, then you can think about a job. It, which is the best university for a degree in English? No, okay. I think they would all fight over the rights for that. Um, <laughs> all of the universities offer excellent English programs. So it's probably more down to the type of lifestyle you'd like to have and the type of campus experience that you would like. Um, there's qu they're quite different from one university to the other. The Otago University campus, for example, um, all students live on campus, so it's a very, um, a very close kind of community, whereas Auckland University students kind of live much further away and they're more dispersed. So, um, yeah, English, it's very good across all of the universities, so it really come down to where you wanted to be. Yeah, I'll just add a little bit something on, um, we spoke about, Linda spoke about uh, residential uh, places where you can, and uh, Otago has, uh, like for example, if you study at University of Otago, uh, you, the University of Otago itself has around 25,000 students living in, uh, in Otago. So what does it mean? It means not only international students, but also domestic students go over there and to live and study in uh, Otago. So there is a question is preference given to STEM students or are students looking to in the liberal arts given equal preference? Is Linda, that for secondary that? school or tertiary, I'm wondering? Um, if it's secondary school, there is no particular preference. Um, one of the things that New Zealand schools are very good at is um, working out where students' passions and interests lie and we provide very good STEAM programs as part of the compulsory side of what we do at school, but we also allow students to follow their, um, you know, follow the, their passions in terms of the liberal arts and so on. In terms of entry into university, it depends on the university you're going to and the nature of the course you're doing. If you're wanting to study medicine, for example, um, at Otago, you would do a, a, a year of health sciences and on the basis of your results that would determine which health areas you could get into. Auckland University on the other hand has a, um, a competitive entry model for uh, health sciences to get into medicine the first year. So Anushka has asked is there a scholarship and how can we qualify for one? Again this will depend on what you really want to do Suppose you're coming for high school or after the 12th. Now, in case you choose, I'll give you different uh, two situations. In case you have studied in high school year in New Zealand. So as an international student, uh, you come under a different category and different universities will offer different scholarships for students who have only studied in New Zealand and only studied in New Zealand high schools, being international students. So then you get a little bit better, more advantage by studied by being uh, having studied in the high school um, here in New Zealand. Now there is a student which I spoke about earlier, K, who came from Bombay Scottish, because um, uh, she was very good in her art and she applied connected to fashion. She uh, provided all her documents, a portfolio, everything that she did in art, uh, and she got a ten thousand New Zealand dollars scholarship. So that saved her a lot of money. Uh, towards her tuition fees and whatever she wants to do. The scholarship is, yes. Um, I oh. see there is a question about um, language qualifications. So um, IELTS, um, overall score of six and no bands below 5.5, paper base, TOEFL, overall score of 60 and a writing score of 21, or a C1 advanced, in Cambridge English. Um, so those are the undergrad requirements. Um, but again, if you look up the, um, the websites of the various universities, they'll be able to tell you that information. Bachelor of Humanities. Um, <laughs> These universities are very competitive. Targo University would say they are. 
uh, University of Waikato would say they are. Um, so again, it probably comes down to um, the specific uh, papers you wanted to study and so on. But again, Warren can really help you with that. So I'm just um, uh, doing some uh, maths in terms of food. Uh, you asked a question, uh, Ria, whether what is the cost of the program in INR? So uh, for per year, it is roughly around 30 to 34,000 when you do a program with a, a university. If, you, uh, if a similar program is also available with the institute, which is the Polytech. Uh, remember the Polytechs that I spoke about earlier, which are 16 um, uh, institutes, ITPs that we call it uh, in New Zealand. Uh, they are also government owned. So both the university and the institutes are government owned. So the, the only difference is the applied type of knowledge that you get in when you go to the institutes. Um, and the, but the cost over there is a little cheaper. That is around 22 to 24,000. It will differ from one institute or Polytech to the other. Uh, when I'm talking about 22 or 24,000, I'm talking about in New Zealand dollars. So New Zealand dollars, roughly for easy calculation, you take it as 50 rupees. Normally it is 48 rupees something per uh, dollar. So if you say 22,000 into 48, if I take is around 10 lakhs 50,000 uh, per year. So for each year, you'll have to plan to keep around 11 lakhs plus your cost of living will be around seven and a half lakhs, which is 15,000 New Zealand dollars. So, uh, so that means it's roughly around, uh, say around 18, 17 lakhs to 18 lakhs per year uh, for your bachelor's program uh, in New Zealand if you do it with an ITP. When you do it for with the university, it will be another $10,000, which is $10,000 is equal to roughly around 5 lakhs rupees, you can say, additional per year. Uh, Ria has asked whether can we apply for New Zealand citizenship once we have done with our studies and are on our three year work program? This has got to do with immigration rules, which uh, are governed by different rules and systems, which is there available on the website. But when you go onto the website, you will see uh, you, it's once you're doing your studies, it's quite difficult to get a citizenship during uh, while you're studying. Um, uh, when you just started a course. It's once you complete it and once you go to work over there, it depends on whether you meet the requirements of immigration uh, rules. Uh, yes, there's a possibility. But those, all that information is on the immigration website. Data analytics and information science, sorry, I don't know the best universities for that. Warren, are you? Able to answer uh, data analytics, you could, there are a couple of universities you can, may choose, either uh, University of Otago, you may choose Victoria University, um, or you may choose even some of the ITPs are offering the similar things like, say, EIT is offering it, ARA is uh, offering these type of courses. Um, like I mentioned earlier, institutes cost is around 20 to 22,000 per year. They sometimes provide even a scholarship of one or 2,000 per year. And um, universities are around 32 to 34,000 per year. But there are good, uh, depending on what you want to do um, and which year of intake and what you have achieved in terms of uh, in your results. Sachin, that was your question. While uh, Rishita is in the current situation, is there any online program for studying after the 10th grade? Linda, I think that's what you can answer. Yes, yeah, certainly during COVID, schools switched to online learning. Um, the challenge at this stage of the year would be that it's halfway through our academic year. Uh, so it would be very tricky to start a program at this stage of the year. However, there is a possibility that you could do that at the start of next year. Um, and the government is just um, working on changing the rules so that international students can 
be assessed for NCEA whilst offshore, which was something that hadn't been possible before. So it's a possibility, but it's more likely to be feasible if you were doing it at the start of the academic year, which is basically the start of February. Yeah, let me add to that. Maybe we, uh, we never covered. Uh, in terms of high school, our education starts in New Zealand for high school in the month of uh, end of January. So it's a little different from India, which you start in June or July. And sometimes now some schools are starting even in April in India, but our academic year starts in the end of January. So that's a good time to start. Uh, you can probably, like Linda said, sometimes even join midway during uh, a term, but now with the challenges that the world has faced, I think it is best to look at an intake maybe uh, coming somewhere in January. But for that, you need to apply in advance, uh, provide all your documents. Uh, the visas may take a little time because of COVID. Uh, so that's why you need to apply in advance. Uh, I see Sabrato is asking about post-grad uh, international relations. Again, I know of programs at both Otago and um, University of Victoria, which is in Wellington, which are very, very good. It's not to say there aren't other good ones in the country, but those are, you can do master's programs. See, what I would like to even suggest to all people who are thinking, maybe I think uh, since this group is more of eight standard to the 12th, but in case you're talking about your siblings wanting to do post-graduation studies, <clears throat> look at uh, courses and where um, New Zealand requires people to work in a certain area. And then choose, in case you're adaptable in terms of what knowledge you've already got, then choose certain uh, areas like that. For example, say logistics, uh, chain, uh, supply chain logistics is something which is upcoming at the moment where you can think about those type of courses, which is a demand all over the world because supply chain management is not only related to physical goods, now it's got to do with e-commerce also. So there's so much to, um, uh, study connected to supply chain. So there are lots of new, new courses, like one of your students were also talking about data sciences. So all these new things, IT related things are very good in New Zealand. Um, so Suchita has asked about scholarships in New Zealand universities. The easiest way to get scholarships in universities in New Zealand is to get them from secondary school level. So international students are eligible for um, scholarships at university and they range, um, they range vastly from about 5,000 New Zealand dollars through to 35,000 New Zealand dollars, depending on the nature of the scholarship. Um, once you're in universities, I'm not sure, Warren, do you know the availability of scholarships? Yeah, no, like Victoria offers around 10,000 uh, scholarship. Uh, for again, that will depend from coast to coast, and that's more for bachelor programs, uh, which I was explained uh, that example earlier to the students about. Mm -hmm. K achieved uh, that scholarship for ten thousand. So yes, so we we have seen a live example of that. So it's, yes, it's achievable and. Uh, and basically it involves filling out an application form and um, providing yeah. information about your academic results. And depending on the nature of the scholarship, it might be a performance scholarship. So if you're particularly gifted at um, playing a musical instrument or a sports scholarship, particularly gifted in a sporting area, you can get scholarships for those as well. Just one thing um, before we finish up, if you are thinking of coming to New Zealand for part of your secondary education, it really pays to be here for two years so that you would come in in, in our year 12, um, which is your standard 11th standard, um, it would give you two years to get university entrance. Otherwise, it's quite a challenge to get it done in one year. So if you're thinking of secondary I would come for two years, not just one year, remembering that the academic year starts in um, late January. Yeah, so now I think all of your questions have been sorted and um, answered. So we will request uh, Vaijanti to um, uh, please come and 
Thank you. Thank you. What a wonderful Sunday morning. What a wonderful day it has been with so much of information that y'all have brought forth and uh, help all the Salonians to understand what it exactly would entail to study in a place like New Zealand. Thank you so much, Warren sir. And thank you so much, Linda ma'am. Uh, we have a concept here in India. Uh, it's called Vasudeva Kutumbakam. It basically translates to say that the whole world is one family. And we, when we are uh, faced with the kind of disruptions that we are currently, so many doors seem to have closed. But what do we all know? There are so many windows and doors which have opened up for us. And education seems to be moving ahead in leaps and bounds. And uh, in this scenario, thank you so much for uh, bringing all this information to this platform and speaking to our students on uh, the live uh, platform here. Uh, a word to all the viewers who are watching us right now. Uh, Singanya School YouTube Live has always brought forth uh, to all Salonians different opportunities across different places, different industries, different job profiles that you can think of pursuing in your life. This today has been a wonderful and an extremely enriching session where you know probably what you can look at pursuing in uh, New Zealand. The next week too, we will be joined by another absolutely esteemed guest, Mr. Rohit Pradhan, who will bring to you all that he knows and all that you should be looking for when you talk about careers in radio and sound production. What exactly would sound engineering and sound production mean? Let us all come together once again next Sunday. Do remember the next Sunday, this session will be five to six in the evening as is the usual time. Today, we were joined live by Mr. Warren and Miss Linda directly from New Zealand. And hence, this particular stream happens now at 11 to 12 in the morning. Else, next Sunday, without fail, make sure you sit in and watch yet another fantastic live program where you will learn all about careers in sound recording. Have a wonderful Sunday and thank you so much for joining us on this Singanya School live YouTube platform. Have a lovely day ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.